Hey coaches, um, I wanted to go through on how we defend the beast formation. Okay, this is we played a single wing team this year, the last game of the season. Okay, they were they were seven and one at the time, and they were putting up a ton of points. And um, they would run power this way, and then they'd fake power and they pull and they run quarterback counter or quarterback power to the weak side. Okay, so um, we had our hands full coming in, and um, we like to stay in our cover three, but. Um, when you're playing a, a compressed team like this and they're really loading up one side, sometimes you have to get your corners in the game. So, you know, we had to take our, our corner out of the third and uh, get him in the game here. Okay, so what we did, we had a press call. So we were always pressing to the B side. So the offense comes out, they're strong to our left. Okay, so we'll beast left on the defense. And I know most coaches draw up the defense on this side. I, I just, I don't know, it just looks better, easier for me with them up top. I don't know. But um, anyway, yeah, so we beast left, um, excuse me, we press left here. Now what that does, our dog in our corner, our dog, he would come on the outside shoulder of that uh, tackle. And, they, and again, they did tackle over, okay, they had a pretty much, this kid is eligible, he's a tight end, but he was a big tackle, okay, they didn't really throw to him that much. When they did like to throw, or they want us to think they were throwing, they did bring this tight end over. But when they really wanted to pound the, pound the ball, they moved their other, t the, put in their third tackle, played that tight end. So they're basically tackle over here with their receiving threat, who was actually a good run blocker too, to the left. Okay, but anyway, we press up. That means our cornerback would be on the outside shoulder of this wing back. Okay, he's going to be our primary force player. He has he's primary primary contain, and he's also going to have the flat. Okay, and then. Um, our corners are going to roll. We're going to play somewhat like a cover two, okay? If we're scared about the the tight end coming backside, okay, we could lock with our dog and the dog will run one more. We'll lock with our corner, okay? So we're still pretty good to the backside. And now, a lot of times, too, we would laser this, which means laser means our nose is going to slant left, okay? So a lot of times we're slanting him to the strength, okay? It, 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 it bit us in the butt a little bit, especially... You know, t actually twice in the game I lasered them and they ran QB counter, so I kind of slanted them out of the way. But if you're really concerned to run into the power, we'd, we'd laser it. We'd slant our nose to the to the strong side of the gap. Okay, so now we would also sometimes shift our backers, okay, in the press. Instead of our Leo stacked over the tackle, our Leo is stacked over our dog. Okay, and now we have very physical dogs. They did a great job. So a lot of times they would down block, okay, down block, down block, down block. This kid would come and try to kick out, okay? And then this kid would insert for backer. And they'd pull the backside guard. He he blocked down, he blocked down. This is basically what they did on power. And then he'd fake that way. So what we did, pre-snap we would come out in our regular formation. Let's draw this back to our base defense here, okay? And then um, we would press. So our dog would be here, and our cornerback is going to roll up right on the line of scrimmage on the outside shoulder of this wing back. Now what this does is this creates a harder kick out lane, okay? Harder, excuse me, a harder kick out angle for this blocking back. And a lot of times, okay, our dogs are primary contained, and they knew that coming in from scouting us. So what we do is basically a gap exchange, okay? He would squeeze this down block, so this dog would squeeze down this this down block, and we replace with our Leo. So it would confuse the kickout player, okay? Pre-snap, they're going to see they want to kick out the end man on the score line of scrimmage, which is basically our dog, okay? But he's slanting down, and he's kicking out. So that created that created some indecisiveness, okay? He would have our tackle would have B, no slant A, and our linebacker was free to scrape over the top. Our linebacker had a ton of tackles this day, okay? And we had him key the, wing, uh, the blocking back. Because they ran pretty much to the blocking back every time. If it was power, blocking back would kick out this way. If it was QB counter this way, the blocking back would pull and, and lead this way. So he took us to the ball most of the time. But basically, you know, we'd squeeze this tackle down. Don't allow him to down block on our offensive tackle. We'd be real physical and we anchor C. And then he scrape over the top, he have free. Corner would have contain. And the mic would scrape. Okay, he's going to have B. He's going to read step C, then pursuit, and then he's going to be backside contained, and we'd roll into a cover two. And again, okay, we could we could lock on this tight end, we could blitz the dog off the edge, you know, or we could do the same thing. We could move him up, 
and have him squeeze down and loop this backer. Okay, so that's what, what we did to stop the run. It worked very well. We didn't allow this kid to drive our D-tackle down or really get this, you know, they banked a lot on double teaming or getting this D-tackle washed, which created that seam. So we squeezed that block so he can't get our D-tackle washed. And then we would replace, he would hold C, and then the Leo would scrape across. So if we don't allow this down block and we kind of spill this kick out, we're in great shape. It basically stops the play, okay? Play is designed to go right in here. If we spill this outside, we're in great shape, okay? So it's very important, too, that this dog takes on this kick-out block. If this kid, this D-tack, um, this offensive tackle or tight end does a good job of dipping and ripping to work on to the second level or blocking down, we don't get a good piece of him, okay, make sure he, we tell this kid to wrong-arm him, okay? We want to really gut this. The idea is to spill this play outside. That's what we want to do, spill this play outside. Now, if this kid is beating our squeeze from our dog, we will do an uptown call, which means basically... He's going to squeeze and then come off. It's kind of a late, he's going to squeeze and come off late. And this and this tackle is going to slant C rather than slant B. And then in that case, the mic would have B here. And then the tackle would have C. So if he's really getting squeezed down, we would slant him to the C gap so he could meet that uh, down block. Okay, so that's basically how we stopped it. Okay, a lot of times when we were shutting down their power, you know, and, and this is a great concept. This down, down, kick out, pull, and then insert. It's a great concept, okay? You know, they did move the ball a little bit on us, okay? But um, especially with the QB counter early, okay? Because we, we were kind of flying out of there. We weren't as disciplined as we should have been. But um, we ended up beating this team, what was it, 24-12. So um, it was a good game, competitive throughout most of it. We kind of ran away with it later, later in the game. But uh, defensively, we played great. So after we would stop their their power, okay, they would run. They would run QB um, QB counter the other way. So this kid would come, buck down. They would actually pull this kid. He'd kick out, and this this blocking back would lead through the hole. He'd fake it and go. So in that case, okay, our dog still maintains primary contain, okay. Sometimes we would uptown this, okay. So if we're scared about the down block. But um, we would basically stay in our base mostly, which was downtown. Okay, so he'd slant down. He'd have C. So as soon as he's seeing those down blocks, okay, he knows he's got, <laughs> it's probably coming his way, especially if they're taking that start, that hard down block, okay. He's got to fill C. He's got D. And as long as our mic reads his key, okay, it's going to take him and he's going to help with flowing to the ball. Now, if I don't raise her, I could raise her this if I thought, it was QB counter, I could raise her, which would send the nose to our, we'd slant to the defense's right. So that helped a little bit too. Okay, that's when I was pretty certain it was QB counter. I was scared about QB counter. I'd, I'd slant my nose to the le uh, to the defense's right. Okay, and um, you know, that's how we stopped it. The biggest thing was our mic was free. You know, our middle linebacker is our best defender, best overall player on our team, okay? So he, he's pretty much, what's great about this defense is he's free to make plays almost every time. Okay, so he had, a, he had a hell of a game. Now our nose, okay, if he doesn't get a razor or a laser call, he is two gapping the A gap. Okay, we had a pretty, we had two very good nose guards that were able to really shock and anchor their gap and then shed and then come off on the ball. So he, they did a good job of anchoring both A gaps, which helped us tremendously. Okay, he was, he had to get double teamed a lot. Okay, they, our noses did a really good job, and that helped free up our mic. So, I mean, when you press, okay, you are a little vulnerable to the pass. Okay, we always tell our dog we need to get a piece of this kid because let's say this is a tight end or a receiver, okay, receiver type tight end, okay. We can't give him a clean, clean release, okay. And our, and our corner has to read, too, if he reads pass, okay, this kid was out. This is the concept they liked, okay. They'd run it out, and then they'd run the wing back corner. So our corner would have to get underneath that out, and then the corner out your pass to the safety. Okay, that was their best play action passing play. They had another nice play where they would flood. Okay, and they would safety would would have him. Corner would have to get under the out, and then they had this open. Okay, so they did hit that nice on us once. Okay, it's only for like five or six yards because our corner did a good job playing with depth, and then as soon as that ball was thrown, he come down and made a nice tackle. So there is, there is some vulnerabilities, okay? But at the end of the day, 
we did a great job squeezing this tight end and not letting them out. Okay, so he wasn't able to get on his corner out. So we basically essentially took out the tight end from the game. Okay, we would be real physical with them, and he wasn't able to get out on his pass routes at all. So um, that's how we defend the beast or single wing type offenses. A lot of times, you know, against offenses like this, you got to press. Sometimes you got to press your corners up. You know, I, I love sitting three deep with our corner or third. Safety in the middle and then a corner in the other third. But sometimes, you know, with these power schemes and then pulling and all these blockers at the point of attack, sometimes you got to get your corners in the game. And you got to get a little tougher at the C and B gap. So, you know, that's our answer for Beast. For the most part, it worked for us. Okay, there, again, there are some holes. But overall, you know, we took away their two best plays. We took away their power. We took away their QB counter. And we took away their power pass. And... You know, they made we made them try to beat us with something else and they really couldn't.